American citizens should ask themselves, am I morally fit to survive? Many of you watching this program have little to no idea of what is entailed in a thermonuclear exchange of nations and choose to ignore anything that may suggest that it's possible. Yet we find ourselves on the verge of such a crisis. Uh, on Syria, I have uh, at this point not ordered military uh, engagement in the situation, but the point that you made about uh, chemical and biological weapons is critical. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. Obama's push for conflict in the Middle East and places like Syria and Iran can easily escalate to direct conflict with Russia and China, both thermonuclear powers, despite attempts to avert such conflicts from leading generals in the United States, such as General Dempsey. The shuttle's descent rate is 20 times steeper than... I understand that some believe that we should attempt a return to the surface of the moon first, as previously planned. But I, I, I just have to say, uh, pretty bluntly here, we've been there before. Obama's attack on the NASA space program through cutting things like the Constellation Moon program pose a very real threat to the survival of mankind. Another Obama presidency will put America and the world full steam ahead on the course to mass extinction. What is missing is the political will to adopt a policy of progress, one that Mr. LaRouche has defined with the Strategic Defense Initiative back in the late 70s. The Russians have put the SDI back on the table in the form of the Strategic Defense of Earth. This is an international economic program that would involve America, Russia, and possibly even China to embark on a new era of space-based technologies that would enable mankind to detect and defend ourselves against natural disasters and extraterrestrial threats. By the end of this presentation, we will make clear to you that only this kind of international initiative can ensure mankind's survival. We will elevate your notion of defense to one that starts with a strategic initiative for mankind one that utilizes technology to ensure economic development and progress. We will also take up the question of why Obama cannot be the Democratic nominee for the presidency. We interviewed two members of the LaRouche Pack basement team, Ben Dennison and Leona Fan Chang, to take up these subjects in detail. When we talk about strategic defense the way that Lyndon LaRouche has laid out, it's a very different concept than most people think when they think of defense. Most people think of other enemies shooting at you or something that is constrained to a, a very local environment. As of this point, we're in a totally, com a completely different era. And we need to begin to think about real strategic defense. Now, strategic defense, the way that we've defined it, is something that is going to take a, a, an incredibly uh, advanced space program. Because we're talking about defending against the things that really take out entire civilizations, if not just large populations. So we are talking about asteroids. We're also talking about hurricanes that have wiped out entire cities. These are not things that are unpredictable. So these are the type of things that we have to take into account and that are real defense. These are the type of things that, for example, the Army Corps used to deal with. As far as, for example, the disaster we had at Katrina years back now. But that was an example of just pure negligence, where we have the capability to, for example, sustain, to repair our dams, but we decided not to. So both the forecasting capability of hurricanes and other extreme weather, uh, and then also the uh, response capability, and also the, the just basic infrastructure, that's all part of defense.
And I think the key thing is it does start, the whole understanding of the current situation does start with Lynn's SDI. Because the SDI was a unique program design that Lynn had. But it was based upon him, him recognizing, he, he wasn't unique to recognizing the threat that it addressed. You know, he said repeatedly that going back decades, you know, starting with what Truman did, but as the Cold War escalated with the growth of the understanding of the threat of nuclear weapons, thermonuclear weapons, <clears throat> that it was a growing recognition that warfare had completely changed. That you couldn't have warfare, conventional warfare, the same way you've been having warfare for centuries, right? But now you're at the point where if that mode continues, if the, if the same mode of action that, that had existed for, for you know, centuries continues at this point, now you're looking at extermination warfare. You don't do... You don't do strikes and counter strikes and battles and flanks. You do one strike. If you're going to hit, you hit and you hit every. You hit with everything you have, because the idea is total annihilation. You want to completely annihilate your target. You want to completely annihilate the retaliatory capabilities of your target. So it's a completely different geometry. It's one strike, you know, five minutes, and it's over. It's done. So this is just kind of the context. I mean, it's it's. So when Lin came in with the SDI, he was coming into a very clear strategic reality that the world was trying to contend with, which is that you're, any, any warfare is now thermonuclear warfare. It's extinction warfare. And you just can't have the same type of wars that you had in the past because you just wipe out civilization. So you develop technologies that can render thermonuclear weapons obsolete. But you also uh, generate a new kind of... We were, we were talking about it at the time that the beam revolution, the development of lasers, the development of controlled plasmas, the, the, the development of fusion, the development of particle beam systems, that this, we were saying, would be a new industrial revolution for the world. They'd have a complete revolution in, in, in production, in the power of labor, in the manufacturing capability as a function of these new technologies. The point is that that as, an, as a set of technologies, as a nesting of technologies, will be able to advance faster than the uh, missile systems. So you, you'd be able to outpace the, the technological strategic capability of the missile systems with the SDI systems, the beam defense systems. But what Lynn said is that, so we have this potential, this technology can outpace thermonuclear weapons. Um, it's not going to be one perfect system, it's going to be a set of systems that can then uh, protect all of mankind against thermonuclear threats. But Lynn's idea was that you take this system and we pose it to the Russians for collaboration in the development of this system. We turn the, uh, the, the, the Cold War domain of conflict into a domain of mutual cooperation in overcoming a threat that threatened the whole planet, which is these thermonuclear weapons. So you put on the table, it was really a flank to getting beyond the whole mode of warfare that had existed, where you're actually engaging you know, the two superpowers at the time, the most powerful nations at the time, in collaboration in the systems that will, uh, one, eliminate the threat of thermonuclear weapons. But as Lynn was most uniquely uh, clear on and was the key person in, 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 in organizing the concept for, uh, is the science driver aspect to this. When, when we talk about a space program, we're not talking about one, one thing, one rover, one orbiter that's going out. That may be a reconnaissance mission, and that's sort of what we've done so far. In part, as part of the process, but in part also, especially over the past 30 years, as just what we could sustain under the economic conditions that we've imposed upon ourselves. But really, when you're talking about, when we're talking about a space program, we're talking about colonizing space. And we're talking about conquering the, conquering space. And f 
sort of getting rid of that idea that space is empty. That means what some people have called the space infrastructure. If we had mining capabilities on the moon, if we had industrialized the moon, certain things would not even be an issue at this point. Like, for example, asteroid defense. We could also have capability to launch from the moon. And uh, besides the fact that we may not want to shoot at asteroids or deflect them, we may actually want to mine them. And that would be a whole other capability, which would be part of having an ability to, to really conquer space. Uh, Mars is the same thing. You don't, s we're, we're, be we're moving beyond just sending one or two things. We do want to actually have a capability, uh, an operational capability uh, in the Mars orbit. Those are the type of examples of uh, having a, a completely new system. And that's, that's what really is, is being proposed right now by the Russians, international collaboration on a completely new human species, basically, a completely new system, not one or two things that they want to build. So Lin's idea is that mankind has progressed to the point where we cannot continue the mode of warfare that existed for centuries. And what we need to do is embark upon a new, uh, a new path for mankind based upon collaboration in the elimination of common threats. And we can also collaborate on, challenge, on taking on bigger challenges, which mankind has yet to really seriously take up, like the threat of asteroids and comets. You know, if you look at the moon, what's the moon covered in? Craters. You know, those craters didn't all come from billions of years ago. This is a continuing process where bodies in the solar system do get hit with these large asteroids, comets, you know, various space junk, so to speak. And some of the speeds involved in this can be so large that the effects can be incredibly dramatic. So this is something that's been looked at for, for a long time. Uh, there's, been, there's been serious concern about this issue in Russia, serious concern among certain circles in NASA and related institutions in the United States. So it's highly significant that Russia has put out the offer, and you know, we've picked up on it, the LaRouche Pack, of the idea of a, a joint collaboration between the USA and Russia. You know, Mr. LaRouche is saying we should bring China in on it, and we should collaborate, we should in, embark upon a collaboration upon taking on the, th the, the challenges that threaten all of mankind. You know, I think the way we should be looking at this now is it's, it's, it's a challenge being put forward to the human species. Is mankind going to actually step up and reorder our international relations based upon a conception of where we want mankind to go? Or are we going to continue down the path of uh, warfare, conflict, and right now it's very clear leading toward our own extinction with the threat of thermonuclear warfare on the table if we continue this mode of conflict and war. So in a sense, it's, it's, it's a very clear option being put forward. What path does mankind want to go in? Man, what, it's kind of, it, it's, it's, you know, you could even, if you want to put it in these terms, you could say it's a question of the awakening of mankind. Does, or the, the, the growth of mankind. Does mankind as a species want to actually operate as one coherent self-conscious species that recognizes whose prime concern is what is it going to take to advance mankind? What is it going to take to ensure the continued existence of mankind? How do we defend mankind? And again, two of the key issues that, that we're, we're, that's right up front right now is the threat of war is a threat of thermonuclear war, uh, which puts the question of the SDI right on the table to develop the, the defense systems to stop thermonuclear war. And right next to that, and very related, is the question of uh, asteroid and comet threat from these extraterrestrial uh, threats that just pose a challenge to any life that exists on this planet, including us. So the question now is, it, it's been put on the table internationally. The Russians have, have stated very clearly 
China's hinted very clearly in this direction. So the question is on the United States. Is the United States going to embark upon this, this are they going to reciprocate the offer and embark upon this, this uh, uh, direction of collaboration in defense of mankind, collaboration in the progress of mankind? which means obviously getting Obama out of office immediately. He represents everything wrong with the world right now. Right? He, he, can, he represents this imperial oligarchical tradition. He was just a tool of this faction out of Wall Street and London. Right? So getting him the hell out of the way and getting a sane government, right? you could find a million people in the United States that would be more qualified to be president than Obama. Right? and a million people that would be ready to carry forward the type of collaboration and direction that we need to go in. As has been demonstrated here, and will become even more clear in the coming days on this website, a renomination of Obama would mean that our species has willfully chosen mass extinction. With this new notion of defense, a strategic defense, you are now responsible to ask the bigger question, Will mankind become self-conscious enough to begin thinking about what we as a species have to do to protect ourselves and to continue to progress?